Um, okay. So, here we are. Day two of the week. We have to make our third character. And now, now comparing them to our others. Here, I'm going to move our, our kind of cheat sheet reference over for the new type of character sheet we're experimenting with this week. But we can draw a line now around uh, Salen and Guido and see where it ends up with this new character and find out where this, where in Mesomasca this next part of the campaign will take place. Dark Wolf says, my people. What do you mean, your people? Uh, let's start with uh, percentile roll. Bink. 70. We have another male. Male. Next up, we're going to roll a d10 and figure out which race he'll be. <laughs> okay, bubonic. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, cause this, is, this is called the Vampire Castle. Uh, so it, you'll hear a, a wolf in the background. All right, let's see. Will Bubonic get a five? Uh, by the way, Bubonic, we have rolled at least one Dragonborn before. I was going back through old files, and I did see there was at least one, maybe two that we rolled. Anyway, here we go. Bada 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 boom. Eight. Oh, hey, it's another half orc. Interesting. Interesting. They are medium size. Next up. Oh, that's going to also give us common orcish. <clears throat> Tea in my beard. Oh my goodness. This is just what a what a day for a broadcast. I mean, I got energy. I'm I'm pumped. I got some KFC on the way home. Oh, it was, it was good. I haven't had it in a while. Um, though I was a little sad they didn't have any grilled chicken. They only had their uh, regular and extra crispy. So, yeah, you got to make do with what they have. Yeah, Bubonic, I I'm happy to see uh, not commonly uh, played races either. <laughs> alignment is going to be a 2D100 to figure out each axis of alignment. 60 and 60. All right, this is going to put us into a, uh, a true neutral. There we go. Just on the cusp, too. Next up, we're going to figure out which level he is, and that's going to return us to a 1D100, and we're going to hit this. 92. Woo, wow, we're, we're getting a high-level group together here. 92 is level 16. Of, of the four ASIs he's going to get, how many are feats? Let's figure out with a percentile roll. 67. Not quite there. So we're going to go pure stat bumps with this character. And remember, that's plus two to one stat or plus one to two stats. No, I, I know, Bubonic. We have another place in town called Lee's. Uh, like F uh, Lee's Family Recipe Chicken. Um... I would generally agree that it is better chicken and better sides. Um, if you're a fan of uh, th those things, you can also get um, like gizzards and lizard uh, gizzards and lizards, gizzards and livers, and you know more of the like country, country uh, sweet meats and whatnot. Uh, though unfortunately, it wasn't on the way home, and uh, I was being a little lazy, and I said I want fried chicken. <laughs> I guess I could have stopped at uh, at uh, Kroger, which is a local supermarket here, or a grocery store, and uh, and gotten it because I stopped for some gas too. But I said no, I just want to stay in my car and go home because I got things to do. So sorry that that's part of why I'm panicking. I had cats crawling all over me. Man, you bring that you bring a fried chicken home, and cats are just mm, please. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're level sixteen. We're going pure stat bumps. Let's roll up the background real quick. That's a D13. Eight. Eight is a noble or a knight. We do not have an origin. And so we're just going to go straight into 2D8 for personality traits. And 3D6 for the other portions of the background. Let's come down here. Personality traits. Hit it. 
eight and five. And six, six, one. Boom. Got there. Nice and easy. This is all well and good, but he is a level 16 what? Let's answer that with his big golden button right here. A five. One, two, three, four, five. We have a fighter. That means we're going to get to roll a d4 for which, uh, which archetype of fighter and a d6 for which fighting style he's going to be using. 1d4, roll. 3. 1, 2, 3. This is a student of war. Pardon? And then 1d6. Fighting style 5. Protection. Sword and board? Mm -hmm. You like a place called Bojangles? Purely Southern? Oh, with a name like that, for sure. Purely Southern. Well, do they serve any like particularly interesting dishes at Bojangles? I, I always like hearing about this stuff. Alright, there's that. We have a little bit more to randomly generate, and then we can start filling in what the numbers themselves mean. Here is our half orc stat line. They start at four foot ten, and we're gonna add two D ten to it. Thirteen we keep at I think this is the third time we've added thirteen inches to a character. That's very interesting. There are no coincidences. Everyone in the party is 5 foot 11. I guess they can see eye to eye though, right? Hey. We're going to take this same 13 and we are going to multiply it by 2d6. By 6. Uh, 18. So we're adding 78 pounds to 140. So 218. There we go. Now we're gonna roll a percentile to find out where on the probability curve of age this character is. 74. This character is uh, also middle-aged. Ooh, I wonder if we're gonna have some sort of uh, either like a brother or a brother in arms to, uh, to Guido Morik here. Now we come down here to half-orc, right? Middle-aged is column 4, and we see where it intersects right here. 41 to 55. That's a D15. We're going to come down here, change 13 to 15, and hit roll. 3. Okay. Uh, so he is, uh, he is 43 years old. Right? Because 41, 42, 43. Just out of curiosity, 49 for Guido. Interesting. All right, let's see where this ends up. Oh, so they, they, they don't really have like a, a special or weird side dish, but the fried chicken itself is just mwah, molto bene. <laughs> All right. What is next? Oh yes, we are finished with the random number generation, and now we need to delve into it. We've created this silhouette, right? We've we've pulled a silhouette from the mists of creation, from the ether. 
we have an outline of a character. But just knowing that uh, it's a male half-orc fighter doesn't really tell us a lot about the character. The numbers and the stats are important, and those will come later. Who is he? And we're going to take that journey right now. If any of you are new in here, this is, this is what we do. We're storytellers. We're creators. Uh, we want to make sure that we're creating compelling characters as well as teaching you how to create characters and how to think about a character whether it's one that you're currently playing or one that you've always wanted to play, something along those lines. And of course, if you have questions along the way or comments, please ask, please uh, state your comments, because this isn't my character, this is our character. If you don't know what something means, for instance, what is protection fighting style, I will be happy to go into detail and to read the entry and how it works. All you gotta do is just type in chat, say hi, and participate because right now we're all a bunch of nerds sitting around a table in a game store. That's that's how this channel's operating. Dirty southern rice and mac and cheese. Ooh, <laughs> southern butter uh, buttermilk biscuits. Oh, bubonic man, you are making me. Uh, you're making me like you're making me regret a decent KFC meal. <laughs> Why you do? <laughs> okay, uh, let's scroll alphabetically down to Nobler Knight, and we start with the background first, because this is going to tell us more than what a fighter will tell us, who he is or was and the things that he's done. It's also going to give us some background skills that he will have acquired perhaps before becoming a fighter. I think he was some... Uh... I think he has some connection to our other half-orc. That could very well be, Dark Wolf. If you start seeing those lines of connection, speak up. Uh, we can connect them in some way. Remember, right now, we're PCs, and we're all we're huddled together saying, okay, you know, Matt's going to run a campaign. Let's make characters and, and breathe life into them. And so maybe we have two half-orcs that, um, uh, that are, you know, sort of uh, get, that, that are brothers or brothers-in-arms, Right, so the other was a soldier. Well, here we have a nobler knight. He could have been a commander, maybe. Oh, by the way, we need to roll a d10 and figure out, does he favor his orcish half more or his human half? Odds or evens is what we're looking for here. Evens, okay. This is the favored human. Whereas uh, Guido Morik here, he favored his orcish side. Now... Is that an official thing in D&D in the PHB? Not necessarily, but there's not really a sub race for a half work to be. And what this will do is act as a tiebreaker when it comes down to personality traits, maybe even looks. Uh, so yes, it is a half work by name, but maybe his, his orcish appearance is way more muted and he looks more human than Guido would, even though they're both considered to be half orcs. Uh, where was I? Sailor, uh, we went a little... We went too far. Alright, we're going to begin with the description of Noble. If we decide that Knight is a better fit, we can simply swap out the feature of Noble for the feature of Knight and go from there. Uh, we are going to get a couple goodies. Um, we are getting skill proficiencies in History and Persuasion. History is under Intelligence, right here. Persuasion is under Charisma. All we do is we fill in the little radio button. We get a tool proficiency in one type of gaming set. Well, uh, if we're looking for a connection with, uh, with Guido, then we would make that a dice set, because that's what he's proficient in, and that also links uh, both of these characters to Salen, who also enjoys gambling. So we'll come up here to tools and we'll say dice set. Languages, we are going to get another of our choice. And we can come up with that in whatever whatever time we, we deem fit. Let's go to our backpack. We are going to get a set of fine clothes. Uh, we are going to get... A signet ring, a scroll 
of pedigree. That that way he can prove who he is and his lineage. And a purse containing 25 gold. There we go. Nice and easy. I think we were mentioning that the other half-orc was captured at some point. Current one could have rescued him. That's a possibility. Uh, we'll find out a little bit more about his personality and, and mold the two together. So keep that in mind, Dark Wolf. The noble background that we'll start with before we consider knight is the following. Position of privilege. Thanks to your noble birth, people are inclined to think the best of you. You are welcome in high society and people assume you have the right to be wherever you are. The common folk make every effort to accommodate you and avoid your displeasure, and other people of high birth treat you as a member of the same social sphere. You can secure an audience with a local noble if you need to. Alright, so we're keeping that in mind for right now. Let's come down here and fill in the personality traits. Eight. If you do me an injury, I will crush you ruin your name, and salt your fields. Okay. And five. I don't like to get my hands dirty. And I won't be caught dead in unsuitable accommodations. So, he's going to do all this, but he's going to send agents out, or he's going to make your life miserable through the bureaucracy, and good luck. Um, he is of a neutral alignment, uh, and so this is, he He is not looking out of vengeance to do this, but he will visit vengeance upon those who visit uh, violence upon him as a, a way to um, mediate. Uh, maybe he's kind of an eye for an eye kind of character. Uh, and yes, there's the adage of an eye for an eye and the whole world goes blind, uh, you know, maybe he hasn't quite gotten to that part, but it's it's of neutrality. You know, are you going to attack my lands? Well, I am going to. Um, I will take. I, I will seize yours. You know, you're not happy with them. Clearly, uh, you want more from them, and I will. I will make better use of them. You know, if you've forsaken them because you want others, uh, I will salt your fields, and that way you won't have anything. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, so he almost maybe like a kind of a, a King Solomon style uh, adjudication here, right? He was willing to cut the child in half, but um, that was what it was. Okay, whoops, I scrolled up too far in the wrong document. I will ruin you. Well, ba actually, uh, Brutus will be doing that, but ruin will be upon you, yes. <laughs> Ideals. Oh, number six. Ah, noble obligation, a.k.a. Uh, you might have heard this as uh, noblesse oblige. It is my duty to guard... Oh, it is my duty to protect and care for the people beneath me. So he does see that people are beneath him. I mean, if, if we're calling things like evil, right? I, I know this isn't the best way to judge, like, well, one, one good thing cancels out one bad thing, and so he's neutral. Just get the, go for the gist of what we're going for here. Um, it, uh, it's my duty to protect and care for the people beneath him. He does see people as beneath him, but he sees them as that role because he is their protector, and so he is going to step up and actually be the person who can um, who can help provide for them because they are simple people, because they do need someone to lead them. Bonds, number six. The common folk must see me as a hero of the people. That, that works out really well. You will be treated as common folk. I will, you know, if I interact with you, it will be as a noble to common folk. I will not be rude just because I'm noble, uh, but you are who you are and I am who I am and we each have our place in life. And flaws, number one, because we are all flawed creatures, I <laughs> secretly believe that everyone is beneath me. Now, you may say, well, how does, how does that play into what we've rolled above? He does. The catch is here that 
everyone is beneath him. This is including those in the hierarchy, in the nobility that are above him. In that his way is the is the way. The way that he is conducting himself in his lands is better than the current ruler, is better than high religious figures who may hold similar station to him, but secretly he thinks that they should be beneath him. He'll still care for them. He's not seeing them as animals or anything or people to be slaughtered. Uh, but he sees them as people who should just be beneath him and be under his rule because it is uh, it is his way of doing things. There we go. I think we have a compelling character on our hands here. Now, with all of this set up, this is under the presumption that he is a noble. We can look at the variant of a knight. A knighthood is among the lowest noble titles in most societies, but it can be a path to higher status. If you wish to be a knight, choose the retainers feature instead of the position of privilege feature. One of your commoner retainers is replaced by a noble who serves as your squire, aiding you in exchange for training on his or her path to knighthood. Your two remaining retainers might include a groom to care for your horse and a servant who polishes your armor and even helps you put it on. As an emblem of chivalry and the ideals of courtly love, you might include among your equipment a banner or other token from a noble lord or lady to whom you have given your heart in a chaste sort of devotion. Uh, this person could be your bond. Do you see this character as an individual or as part of the other two that we've generated being a noble, someone who is of a higher uh, caste or class and he is on the adventure and he can open up doors in that way or would he be a knight and he's still a noble in a sense uh, though he's more of the, the military fashion. You see a high lord's son or half son of a high lord, typical half work attitude. Uh, okay, so Bubonic, uh, I'm I'm not disagreeing on that. Do you do you see though that he is going to be? Remember, he's a he's a fighter also. That doesn't mean he can't be a pure noble. But do you see him more as the noble of title and lineage and uh, and such, or do you see him more as a knight? Dark Wolf says that a knight a knight would fit better. Hey, Bobicus. Bobicus is saying a um, a regular noble. This seems like a lord, says Bubonic. Okay. So, in, in this case, uh, I, even if we're going sort of two to one Dark Wolf, uh, there he would almost intrinsically maybe be a knight because he is a noble who is a fighter as well. And so, this is him. This is making himself a knight instead of perhaps another character like, I don't know, let's say he was a wizard or something. Um, and so he was like a noble scholar, but they, they made him a knight in a, you know, but in this case we could have said, oh, well, he's a knight in an order and so he needs attendance. But in this case, he already has the attendance and he has all this and he's a fighter. So he's, he's already kind of a knight and it might be redundant. Hopefully that makes sense. Though if you have a counter argument, Dark Wolf, please put it out there and l let's consider it. Also, Bobicus, welcome. I don't know if I said hi yet. He's landed gentry, but he's the second son and went into the military. Yeah, it could even be something along those lines. As an officer, yes, as an officer, of course. <laughs> All right, let's scroll up to our races and come back to half orc. He owes fealty as a knight. I doubt he will see himself as stooping low. So, well, so Bubonic, are you? Are you saying that you think he should be a knight or that he's carrying himself as a knight, but he's not a knight because he doesn't have that 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 bond of fealty or he hasn't taken a chivalrous oath? He's simply a knight because he is a noble who is who has combat training. Carries. We have a run speed of 30 feet. We have dark vision. Isn't that... I, I like this little eye up here, right? We have dark vision of 60 feet. 
we also get proficiency in the intimidation skill. We get relentless endurance. We also get savage attacks. When you score a critical hit with a melee weapon attack, you can roll one of the weapon's damage dice one additional time. Uh, which, by the way, Dark Wolf, uh, tell, uh, tell Kitty on paper slash ah uh, that now that her critical is expanded to 19 and 20, to not also to uh, remember her savage attacks should she score more critical hits. Okay, that was nice and easy. Nice and clean. Half orcs are, are nice. Classes, fighter. Now we are getting a little bit into the weeds because fighters are kind of like wizards. You have a ton of options with fighters. You can do a lot of different fun stuff. And we have a level 16 one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Fighters get D10s. And it's going to have 16 of them available. Um, oh, whoops. We get... Uh, just to show it off here real quick, we come back to Half Orcs. And you can see that they get Strength plus 2 and Con plus 1. Let's just put our little indicators down here for uh, for what we have. All right. Classes. Fighter. We are getting proficiencies in all armor and shields. Simple and martial weapons. No tool proficiencies, and our saving throws are strength, so we're going to hit the little the little diamond up here. Strength and constitution. Bobacus is... Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, real quick. Uh, oh, no, okay. Bobacus says his family was granted their land through military prowess. It is unproductive and in the hinterlands of the Empire, but the logging rights alone are lucrative. Well, now are you saying then, Bobicus, like, are you seeing this character as a member of this invading Imperial army? Because otherwise, uh, don't forget that uh, we are making a campaign that's going to take place in the uh, Mesotopia region. Now, which portion? We know that it won't be Mesomasca. We visited there with a campaign, and now we're looking at the other five remaining countries. Choose two skills from acrobatics, animal handling, athletics, history, insight, intimidation, perception, and survival. If he is noble, I see him as having a halfway decent intelligence. If you remember, we made an intelligent paladin uh, in in the last campaign. I think having uh, I think having something similar could be of use. Maybe uh, well, I, I guess he already has history in this case. Uh, yeah, there's not another smarty pants one. Eh, boo. But I don't know. We could still give him a decent. Uh, we can still give him a decent intelligence score. I don't think it should be his dump stat. Uh, probably, if anything, dexterity is probably going to end up being his dump stat here. It takes a hard man and a strong militia to rule out here, but his father is grooming his weakling older brother for rule, forsaking the family's legacy of strength. I'm following along. I want to see where it's going. Acrobatics, animal handling. He already has... Does he have athletics? He, he doesn't. Strength is definitely going to be one of his things. It's, it's really going to have to be. Insight, intimidation. He has intimidation. I dare say we should almost go like... Strength, Charisma, Int, Con, Wiz, Dex. So Int and... Yeah, there's something along those lines. So maybe we do a... Uh, 
I don't know, what if we did like a 15... 14... 13... 12... 10... 8... Bobica says, continuing, so our half-orc has a chip on his shoulder regarding mere inheritance and the idle noble lords who sit and collect taxes all day. Well, so I, I'm, I'm getting what you're, I'm, I'm getting what you're building here, um, when they could be like him fighting against the beasts of the wild, making a stronger kingdom. And that would explain why he feels that everyone else is beneath him and his way to rule is the one true way, Bobicus. This orc isn't really going to be a strong leader. Most lords don't need a high charisma. That that could be bubonic. If we wanted to swap it out uh, for something different, we could do that. Um, maybe swap the charisma for intelligence. Um, I think he should have some charisma, and I, I don't think charisma should be a dump stat. He is a noble, and he wants to lead, and... I think, especially by middle age, right? Because remember, we, we got to take this into account. He's already middle aged. He's already successful in some way. Uh, well, presuming. I mean, he's level sixteen, right? So he he would have had to have learned how to navigate through things and avoid assassins' daggers and poisoned cups and things along those lines. So we need to keep that age also. If he was just a young pup or something like that, you know, just a, a young up and comer, you know, his charisma, what would he care? Right, and we'd probably make that more of a of a, a lower stat. If like maybe not a dump stat entirely, I don't know. Though this is my this is the tentative spread. If you want to propose something differently, please go ahead and do so. Uh, while you do, um, we should put in a couple more of these skills here. Let's say athletics, because he does come across as being a very strong person. And probably insight to read people. So those are my those are my skill selections, our athletics and insight. If you want to propose something else, hey, this is our character that we're building. Bobicus is thinking animal handling. This guy knows his way around a horse. Sure. And we can take this out of insight and we can instead... It's uh, still wisdom. We can put it into animal handling. Uh, protection fighting style. When a creature you see attacks a target other than you that is within five feet of you... You can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. You must be wielding a shield. So we'll for sure be giving him a shield. And he will probably be fighting up close to uh, with Guido because uh, you get sneak attack if you have advantage against a character and you have an ally next to him. Um, and that could even go for uh, the ranger here. She's a two-weapon fighter. So we have a party that can be really close-knit. We're going to get some more goodies. Goody goodies. Second wind. Action surge. It's nice having two actions on the same turn, isn't it? Um, we're going to get extra attack. Okay. Indomitable. Beginning at ninth level, you can re-roll a saving throw that you fail. If you do so, you must use a new roll. And... What else? Our martial archetypes kind of take over from there. Okay, then his stat gains... Whoa, hang oh, okay, on, that's really... All right. Two 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 zero two zero.
because if if we do start this way, and I'm I'm not opposed to swapping something out like uh, with intelligence and charisma, I think he should have some at least. I don't think charisma should be a ten. Well, I don't know, ten is average, but I don't know. He still sees this. Uh, like, in order to be able to inflict this intimidation, um, in order, right, he doesn't like to get his hands dirty, he, sh he needs to be able to negotiate with people uh, in some way. So th that's why I'm seeing that his charisma is going to be, uh, is going to be higher. But if we do this, that means that we're going to start at level 1 with a 14 con. And a 17 strength. There we go. Yeah, I, I don't think Dex is really going to matter too much. If he's going to go sword and board as a fighter, uh, protection style, he's going to he's gonna want to tank. He wants to be in the front to be hit because hitting him makes him angrier. And when he's angrier, he, he's a better leader. High charisma, but put gains in strength, dex, and con. I I don't know. Well, uh, so my my instinct in Bobicus is is uh, no no dex. Though I am wondering then why do you want to put the the gains in dex? I'm open minded to it, but what do you see him doing with his dex uh, his dexterity score? And remember, we have uh, we have four ASIs to work with, with which to work. Never. Never use a preposition to end a sentence with. <laughs> you just want to put his dex to 10? For what... Uh, like In all honesty, though, for what purpose? I, I know that would cancel a negative 1, but... He doesn't really... He's not focused on any dex skills. And if someone throws a fireball at him, I almost see that he wants to take the fireball. He'll try and dodge out of the way, and maybe he will. Uh, but I, I just don't see him as the type that would want to back down or even try and dodge a conflict. If he sees it that it is his job to protect people, he's going to stay there and not get out of the way. He's going to be... You may have, uh, it, you, you may have a, an unstoppable force, and you have an immovable object, but he's going to be more immovable than something can be unstoppable. That's how I'm getting the. I'm, that's how I'm getting the character. King says, "Just give him less less dexterity." That's right. Dexterity is two. He's just really. Just, he's an ooze inside of plate mail, just sort of like filling out. <laughs> uh, Dex isn't going to be AC for him, Bubonic. Uh, he's going to be wearing. Uh, he's, I think he gets to start with chain mail, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yeah, he gets to start with uh, with heavy armor. AC is not going to do anything for him. Yeah. On that note, we're definitely going to be starting him with chainmail. A martial weapon and shield, or two martial weapons. So we're just going to put in martial up here, and we are going to be giving him a shield bonus. Right? Boom. We mark that. To show that his armor class is including a shield bonus. I guess if we're marking that, we don't really need to write that down because he'd have to have it. A light crossbow and 20 bolts or two hand axes. There we go. A Dungeoneer's Pack or an Explorer's Pack? Hmm. Maybe we could mix it up and give him a Dungeoneer's Pack. He's ready for some interesting interesting things. Maybe he's leading an expedition into some place. The minus one will drop his AC. Uh, no. It, it, Dex, Dex de plays nothing into heavy armor. Oh, let's see. We made him... We rolled him as a student of war. Um, 
Okay, Student of War. At third level, you gain proficiency with one type of artisan, artisan tools of our choice. Ooh, so we have a blacksmith. Uh, but we get... Artisan tools of our choice. Oh, I guess that's Battlemaster. I'm sorry. Right? There must be an error on here, then. There, actually, there, there are a couple errors in here that uh, that do need to be corrected here. Though, I don't know, maybe I made it. Let's double check. Fighter. Yeah, so that's a student of war. I think that should be... Um, there's champion. Ba Battlemaster and student of war as its own thing? Hang on, champion. Battlemaster. But this is coming under, under that. And then we have Eldritch Knight. So I think there's just the three. Yeah. We're going to change this to Battlemaster. Do bards get cantrips? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, that, that hurdy-gurdy vid is really good, isn't it, Delcorin? <laughs> Hey, Romonger, welcome. Uh, those who emulate the archetypal Battlemaster employ martial techniques passed down through generations. To a Battlemaster, combat is an academic field, sometimes including subjects beyond battle, such as weaponsmithing and calligraphy. Not every fighter absorbs the lessons of history, theory, and artistry that are reflected in the Battlemaster archetype, but those who do are well-rounded fighters of great skill and knowledge. Hey, thank you, Dell. Thank you for the host. Uh, when we gain this at third level, we gain we learn maneuvers that are fueled by special dice called superiority dice. We learn three maneuvers of our choice, which are detailed under maneuvers below. Many maneuvers enhance an attack in some way. You learn it in a, two additional maneuvers of your choice at 7th, 10th, and 15th level. So we're going to get all of those. 2, 4, 6. And then we get... Uh, we're we're going to get 9 maneuvers total. All right. Superiority dice. We have four superiority dice, which are D8s. Superiority die is expended when you use it. You regain all of your expended superiority dice when you finish a long or short rest. Uh, so we can put a note here. It's not really a spell, but... Superiority dice. And we have... Four, and then we gain a fifth at seventh. All right, so we have six. And so far, we've used zero of them. Saving throws. Some of your maneuvers require your target to make a saving throw to resist the maneuver's effects. The saving throw DC is calculated as follows. Uh, maneuver save plus... As, uh, okay, eight plus strength or dex of our choice. And, and we'll get to that point. Yep, yep, you got it, Bubonic. <laughs> Add cartography tools is his proficiency, says Bobicus. Is that so he can plot out lands or things along those lines? Yeah, you're very welcome, Delcorn. The hurdy gurdies, uh, you know, Romonger, uh, it's not necessarily a steampunk device, uh, but uh, if you saw the hurdy gurdy video on Discord, that's an instrument that uh, Sten may be interested in, even if it's only to upgrade, but it's a really cool uh, instrument. Alright, so I think for sure his first ASI should go into Strength. And then his second one, uh, probably... We could bring this to 20, and then we add one to something else. Maybe we can bring his... Uh, 
Maybe his charisma can come up some. And then he gets two more ASIs. We can... We can round him out a little bit and maybe give him wisdom. And even bring up his... Uh, maybe we can go... 16 and 13 for Int. And then when he gets his last ASI at level 19... He can use that to uh, round out intelligence, or he can take a feat, or something along those lines. But this would give him a 5 strength, minus 1 dex, 2 con, 1 int, 1 wisdom, and 3 charisma. It's stuff like drawing out battle maps makes sense for a battle master of landed gentry. Yeah, so we could do something like that. We'll put a note for battle maps and such. Uh, so with that, our DC is 8 plus our proficiency. At 16th level, it is a plus 5. Oh, inspiration. We have a plus 5 up here. Uh, so that's 13, that's going to be 18, uh, is the DC of his, um, of his maneuvers. Alright, let's come back down here. Student of War, okay, that's what we get there. Know your enemy. Starting at 7th level, you can spend at least one minute observing or interacting with another creature outside of combat. You can learn certain information about its capabilities compared to your own. The DM tells you if the creature is your equal, superior, or inferior in regard to two of the following characteristics of your choice. Um, different scores, AC, etc. At 10th level, your superiority dice turn into D10s. At 18th... Okay, so they are D10s right now. We'll just do that. Relentless. We are also relentless. Starting at 15th level, when you roll initiative and have no superiority dice remaining, you regain one. Okay. Okay. That finishes us out there. Whoops. You lay down the keel for your ship tonight? Now, is this... Are you talking about in character as in role-playing or with the model that you're building for the ship, Romonger? So it's like a bagpipe, violin, grinder, organ combo thing from the days of yore. An amazing instrument that I'd break my hand trying to play. Yeah, like I, I, I watch the people play it and it's amazing. But I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get carpal tunnel syndrome or something for that. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Hmm. So there's seven of these we won't get. But we are going to get nine maneuvers. Uh, okay, so here, uh, King, because uh, you're you're in here, I don't know how much you saw. This is the personality we're dealing with. We have a neutral noble male half-orc favoring his human side in looks or personality, both. Fighter battle master. His personality is, if you do me an injury, I will crush you, ruin your name, and salt your fields. And he doesn't like to get his hands dirty. He won't be caught dead in unsuitable accommodations. Uh, noblesse oblige, it is my duty to protect and care for the people beneath me. The common folk must see me as a hero of the people, and he secretly believes that everyone is beneath him. Not just the common folk, but even... Uh, those higher up the the food chain than him should be beneath him, and he's and he's taking this measured, balanced approach to, you know, he, he's neutral, right? To ruling over other people. Uh, Rose says, "Role playing. I'm having to redesign the model. Changes in production. <laughs> Do you have some sort of a, a sketch or a work in progress that you wanted to share?"
Let's see, he's a, he's a leader. I definitely think Rally would be a good one. Goading attack. Commander Strike would be a good one for someone of his position. Maneuvering attack, right? He's a strategist. Pushing attack, combat strategy. Trip attack. Menacing attack. Might as well get him a dagger so he can stab his friends in the back when need be. <laughs> why would, uh, wh why do you think he'd end up stabbing his friends in the back, King? Yeah, he doesn't like getting his hands dirty, though. So, he may be learning these things, but like, hey, get off me. I don't want anyone on me. Uh, you know, sit down. Uh, Gur, go away. That kind of a thing. Now, Bob, because if you think any of these, um, if you think any of these maneuvers that he's learned, whether or not he uses them all the time, eh. He's learned them at least, but if you think anything here doesn't match his personality, then let me know and offer a counter. When the 18 Shaw Sorcerer is taking all the credit for that dragon slaying, um, get a dagger for Brutus. I don't know. Oh, I see. He, he just told <laughs> A2 Brute. <laughs> Yeah, so we have like a Caesar. We're making a Caesar here. We are past the Ides of March. How auspicious if it was uh, about a week ago. Okay, we can fill in a couple other things here then. Ten and ten. We'll just copy and paste that uh <laughs> that negative one. One one six in history. One one and one. One six one 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 and three three three. Eight Intimidation and Eight Persuasion. Hey, Spicy Larry, good to see you. Hey, running a game right now, but taking a brief intermission. Just thought I'd drop by and say hello. That's awesome. Um, th uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to come by and, and watch us make this new character. Uh, how's your game going? If you have the time to talk about it, please share. Um, you know, as a DM, are your, PCs, uh, are your PCs in trouble? Are you having a question or anything that we can... 
we can help out, or is this just a, a rest, you know, everyone kind of get up and stretch and, and get a snack? Yeah, totally wasn't uh, thinking about Caesar when picking Brutus's name at... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> skills are nice and easy oh very very good experience points what the heck are those experience points can go away no temporary hp and we can do the a uh, little bit of algebra here right at first level you get your max hp for your hit die uh, then he's going to get 16 levels times two from the con mod that he's carrying plus 16 or I'm sorry 15 levels whoops times half plus one which is six from his hit dice every every other level beyond first uh, and so here we have 32 plus 10 is 42. Uh, this is going to be 30, so we have 0, carry the 3, this is going to be 90. 132. Look at this big boy right here. Dark Wolf, thank you so much for the host. I super appreciate it. Every little bit helps. Really well, I'm just starting... Oh, you're starting Tomb of Annihilation, and they're spending their last night in the civilized world before teleporting to Chult. Uh-oh. Bobacus, yeah, Bobacus is also running Tomb, so Spicy Larry, you and Bobacus can uh, compare some notes, and uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, yeah, maybe... Uh... Oh, no problem. No problem, Romonger. Come back whenever you want. Come and go as you please. King had another political figure in mind, but I run a 37% chance of this turning into a political discussion explaining it. I, I, if you want to bring it up, that's up to you. Uh, you know, trust in us that we can entertain ideas, uh, whether or not we uphold them ourselves. But that is that is the intention of this place, is in the context of role-playing and history. Um, you know, sometimes we... I don't know, we might react in certain ways, and I think that there's an open-minded audience here, King. But that that's your call. I trust you, man. You've been hanging around here long enough. You can make that discretion, or you can uh, you can make that call. Use your discretion. This guy lives by <laughs> Vinny Vidi Vici. <laughs> kind of, huh? Yeah, he's on a he's on a campaign. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you you might need a little bit of time as a uh, DM to read ahead and truly understand uh, the the next zone, for lack of a better term. And uh, Bobicus does put out some good uh, some good advice. <laughs> he, secretly, like Larry and Bobicus, like talk about this all you want in channel. You're not distracting. I personally love seeing this kind of interaction. It's really awesome that you two. Uh, can talk about it and share tips or tricks or say, oh yeah, my party's just getting ready to go here or something along those lines. Yep, that's exactly what it means, uh, Bubonic. And remember that carpe diem means seize the carp. Winnie witty wiki. Winnie witty wiki. I'm looking up and down the munchies menu because I didn't have time to get food before work today. No spells, no companions. These last two pages are, uh, they're not, we don't need to worry about those. I think we pretty well have a, uh, a finished character here. Whoops, we can fill this in. He gets a plus 10 to hit. Plus 10. Oh, we should choose uh, what is his martial weapon going to be. He's using a shield, so it should be able to be one-handed. Or, I mean, we could go versatile if we wanted something like a battle axe or a longsword. 
a flail could be really interesting, right? You want to talk about, like, someone who has, uh, you know, a bit of an uncommon weapon, but someone who wants to exude power and, you know, in bludgeoning? I don't know, a flail could be really interesting. Um, a morning star? Yeah, that, that could be a good one, too. Does he want to pierce or bludgeon? A war pick. That'd be interesting, too. Bubonic's voting for the flail. <laughs> we can give him a flail. That's cool, you Bobicus. And yeah, spicy, man. That's what this community is all about. You come back, check in, share about what your party's doing. If you have any DM questions, pop in, say hi, and don't be afraid to put that out there. Oh, we don't even need to write that in because we can just film the little radio button. Hand axes are 1d6. Slashing. There we go. I guess if we didn't want to fill up uh, features and traits over here, if we really wanted to, we could probably fill them in as cantrips because they're kind of cantrips, right? They modify the normal attacks. Just something to think about. Uh-oh, Delcorn is getting sassy going into the forest. A wolf pack. <laughs> oh, disadvantage? Yeah, three and an eight. Oh, yeah, even if you had advantage. Oh, Delcorn was eaten by wolves. Ripperonis. Remember the old Orcish college motto, we never... <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> hmm. Um, you know what? Once we determine the region that we will be developing, that might influence the other language that he knows. Because each of the regions that are left are going to be inhabited by uh, by different peoples. Shouldn't be in wolf territory. <laughs> hey, yeah, you gotta you gotta talk to the dark wolf about that. Uh, those are her peoples. They call her peoples because she's a person of the peoples. <laughs> Delicious undead. Yep. Yeah. Male undead paladin. I'll let you noodle on that one, Dell. <laughs> Their characters would know this, and it makes the jungle more interesting if they have some idea of the choices they have on their journey, which the rumor table provides. Good advice, Bob. Bobicus. And anti-paladin? Yeah, that's true. Delcorn, yeah, you could be a you could be um an oath breaker. Uh you know, an anti-paladin, a black guard, um, something along those lines. If you wanted. You could still be a good undead, right? If you're if you're vengeful. Um, and you want to fight against the system that put you down in the ground. Ross says, but yeah, we laid down the keel and started building a crew, found ourselves a captain and an engineering team. How long, uh, how long was it going to be, uh, in, in game until your ship is complete? Cause it sounds like you're going to need some kind of a, like a dry dock facility. I mean, such as an airship needs a dry dock, but you get what I'm saying. Chainmail has a 16. Your players call to me and I must return. See you later, Spicy. Let us know how it goes, okay? Keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> All right. We are about done with this character and this segment. Though, uh, Dark Wolf, were you, were you thinking names? Uh, like... Did you want to name him, like, uh, if not, like, Caesar, did you want to name him, like, Krazar or <laughs> something along those lines? Do you really want to have it be, um, 
analogous in that sense? Do you just want to name him, you know, are we just going for a, uh, a, a Kronk? Are we going for, because he's favoring his human side and he's a noble, does he actually have a human name? You know, is he, um, you know, Johansson, you know, Riverfish, something along those lines? How do we want to name his character and what does he look like? conceptually to you all. I can bring up some uh, some things in the interim also. You know, like some male fighter, some half-orc fighter pictures, and we can get some inspiration too. Revenant make good pallies, yeah. Kaiser what? If that's his name. <laughs> Kaiser Wilhelm? <laughs> Give it more of a fantasy spelling, Kaiser. <laughs> yeah, Kaiser Soze. <laughs> old faithful, the old faithful geyser in Yellowstone. something like a Kaiser Gullion or is that is the two L's like a um, are we having an Elvish uh, double L where it's a Y, so it's a uh, Gien? I mean, so aside from a couple details, I think we're doing pretty well. We'll get we'll get to the language here in just a little bit after we determine which region uh, he's going to be uh, traipsing around in. Has a good. I think we could make a good connection to Guido Morik and uh, thereby also Salen Breven, another high-ranking military official. So Guido can be an immediate subordinate from the war. That could very well be Bubonic. <clears throat> Pardon me. Double L is L. Okay, so uh, Gullion. So you wanted this to be Kaiser Gullion. Gullion. <laughs> okay. okay, I think we pretty well have a character. I'm going to take a quick break, uh, finish off my tea... Uh, I might get some salsa out. Who knows if I'm feeling spicy enough. Heh. And uh, we'll come back and we will then focus on another part of Mesomasca. And we'll, we'll enhance it and we'll flush it out. We'll give it regions and rulers and oddities and things along those lines. So stay tuned. Uh, probably take, you know, at least five. It might be a little longer because I'm going to open up some other files, get things ready. Five to ten minutes and we'll get going from there. <laughs> 